Hello, gentlemen. We're going to continue our conversation on colligative properties. Now, colligative properties are physical properties that are affected by the number of solute particles in a solution. Now, the first physical property that we covered was vapor pressure. So that vapor pressure lowers from solvent to solution when you add solute. So the pressure, the vapor pressure of a solvent is higher than the vapor pressure of the solution once solute is added. And this leads us to Raoult's law, which says that the vapor pressure of the solution is proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent times the partial pressure or the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, which is usually water. So the addition of solute lowers the vapor pressure, creating a change in pressure. We had a higher pressure with the solvent, we add solute, and we have a lower pressure now. So this delta P, or change in pressure, is proportional to the mole fraction of the solute times the partial pressure of the pure solvent. So these are just relationships. You won't have to do much math with these, but please know them conceptually. Now our second property that we did not cover, what we're going to cover today, is the boiling point <clears throat> elevation. Now the normal boiling point of a liquid is the temperature at which its vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure, which is at one atmosphere or 760 torr. A solution has a lower vapor pressure than the pure solvent, as we've just talked about. Thus, a higher temperature is required for the solution to achieve a vapor pressure of one atmosphere. So since I don't have much vapor pressure up here, I'm going to need to increase the heat here, which increases the temperature, which increases the boiling point to get my vapor pressure to equal atmospheric pressure here. So the take-home message here is that the boiling point of the solution is higher than the boiling point of your pure solvent. Now we can talk about this temperature difference between the temperature, the boiling point, excuse me, of a solvent versus the boiling point of a solution with <clears throat> delta T sub B. This is the change in temperature for boiling point from solvent to solution. It's equal to the boiling point of the solution minus the boiling point of the solvent. Now delta T sub B is directly proportional to the solution molality. So it depends on molality. The equation that governs that relationship is delta T sub B equals K sub B times molality. Now K sub B is the molal <coughs> boiling point elevation constant. This depends on the solvent, so it's going to depend on water, since water is primarily going to be the solvent we're dealing with, but not in all cases. Now, the case of B of H2O of water is 0 0.51 degrees Celsius per molal. What this means is that the boiling point of any aqueous solution, that is one molal in non-volatile solute particles, is 0 0.51 degrees Celsius higher than the boiling point of pure water, which is your solvent. So if you have one molal, uh, one molal solution, then well, if you have a, I guess, let's say it this way, if you have a, your solvent, it has its boiling point. If you add solute to the point where it's a one molal solution, your boiling point should increase by 0 0.51 degrees Celsius. Now, this boiling point elevation, the amount that it goes up, the boiling point, depends on the concentration of your solute particles. And the concentration of your solute particles is dependent upon molality, or will create your molality. To talk about what's in red here, we have to think about the type of solute <clears throat> compound that we're dealing with. Electrolytes versus non-electrolytes, because we know that different types of solids will have different properties or act differently in solution. For example, electrolytes. Ionic compounds like calcium chloride here dissolve in aqueous or dissolve in a solvent to form an aqueous solution, which acts as an electrolyte. When it does, it dissociates into three ions: calcium two plus and two chlorine or two chloride ions. So I have three particles here. So if I have one molal of calcium chloride, that dissolves into solution. But when it dissolves into solution, that one molal splits into three different things in equal parts, which makes 
three molal. So that's going to directly influence that relationship. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, if I have a non-electrolyte, something like sucrose here, in aqueous solution, it's not going to dissociate because it's not an ionic compound. It's not an acid, not a base. It's simply going to just be solvated, be hydrated, and it will still be one particle. So we can account for these particles by adding one thing to our um, boiling point elevation equation. So we have delta T sub B equals I times K sub B times the molar molality, excuse me. I is the number of particles per solute that's dissolved in solution. So for our last example, we had CaCl2. We had three particles, so I would equal three because K, sorry, CaCl2 dissolves into three ions. Another example, if I have NaCl in water, I dissolved it, and it formed a one molal solution, then delta, delta T sub B equals I times K sub B times molarity, molality, excuse me, I is equal to 2 because NaCl dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus. K sub B is what it is. And we have a one molal solution. We plug in all those values. And since we have two ions that dissociated from the NaCl, our boiling point elevation doubles. It's 1.02 degrees Celsius. So if I dissolve NaCl in my solvent, it will be excuse me, it will take 1.02 degrees Celsius increase in boiling point to get that to boil, or increase in temperature to get to boil. Now, similar to boiling point elevation, we have another colligative property called freezing point depression. Now, the freezing point of a solution is lower than that of a pure liquid solvent. So, for example, if I have my solvent here, my solvent particles, to freeze, they have to crystallize. Crystallization comes from these intermolecular forces reattaching to one another. They form this network of connections through hydrogen bonding. So we get that crystalline structure by forming more hydrogen bonds. We know that. Now if we add in a solute, solute particles are usually larger than our water molecules. So these solute particles make it harder for the hydrogen bonds between solvent to form. It's hard for these solute part, solvent particles, these white particles here, to connect to one another because the solute particles are in the way and they're creating different intermolecular forces within this sample. So, since it's harder to create these hydrogen bonds, more energy has to be removed or lost to lower the freezing point, or, and it lowers the freezing point, excuse me. Since these can't just come right together because the solute particles are in the way, the temperature is going to have to drop more before these guys can move around a little bit more to get with each other and form these hydrogen bonds they need to in order to crystallize. Therefore, the freezing point lowers. An example of this is seawater. Ocean water, obviously, is salt and water. It's a solution. Its freezing point is much lower than just pure water outside of the ocean. If I had a glass of pure water, at freezing uh, points of zero degrees Celsius, then that glass of water would freeze. But obviously ocean water does not freeze. This explains why we can ice skate on a freshwater pond or lake, but we can't ice skate on the ocean because it doesn't freeze over. Now, the relationship between the temperature change between your solvent, your freezing point of your solvent and the freezing point of your solution can be defined just as boiling point elevation with a slightly different chemical formula. Delta T sub F is equal to I times K sub F times the molality. Again, your change in temperature is going to be a positive value. So K sub F is the molal freezing point depression constant. It's a constant that will be given to you, and it's still based on the solvent. So the KF of, K sub F excuse me, of H2O is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. What this means is that an aqueous solution that is one molal in a non-volatile solute freezes at the temperature that is 1.86 degrees Celsius lower than the freezing point of water. Gentlemen, take notes on this and come prepared to talk about this in class next class. Adios.